All right, joining me now, Marshall Henderson, Ole Miss legend, basketball legend, catalyst to the beginning of TBT. Marshall, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Andrew. I know we've been trying for about a week now, so it's good to finally get on. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm glad we can finally make it work. A lot we want to touch on. But first and foremost, you literally played the first ever TBT game. So curious, you know, what was your mindset leading up to that first game? Like, what were you thinking you were you were getting yourself into? Yeah, so I was in my agent, Andre Buck. He um, is in Philadelphia. And so I went up. That was right after my uh, my senior year at Ole Miss. Go up to Philly for the summer to work out. And he was just like, oh, we're playing in like a muddy tournament. And I'm thinking, okay, it's just like, you know, like a hoop it up thing or something. And uh, he's like, we're just going to have a bunch of guys that are represented uh, through me and just have a bunch of pros and go play in the money tournament. I'm like, okay, cool. And then the, I think the, I think the winnings was like 500,000, the, uh, the first go around and they're like, oh, well, we're only going to have five players. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. And, uh, you know, I look and I see some of the teams. I'm Notre Dame. I think they won it, and they had it. They had an alumni team, and there was just, you know, I see Hakeem Warwick was on my team, and I was like, oh, I was like, I don't know how young I was when he played with, with Mello at Syracuse, but I definitely knew Hakeem Warwick, and I was like, okay, well, this will be great. And uh, the first game we played, uh, I think it was an NAIA team. And Hakeem just dominated. It was so awesome. I was just beating him the ball. And, I mean, he was doing some things that I haven't seen a lot of people do. The way of being able to palm a ball and uh, do certain moves. And then we ultimately got taken out by some old heads from Chicago. They just came in and busted us. And, uh, you know, that's what – that was my first experience in TBT. And then, you know, I didn't I, – I wasn't involved um, – with the setting up the team and doing the vote, the fan vote uh, process to get in. But, you know, once I saw that, and at the time it was, no one knew about it. I was like, Oh, there, there could be a potential chance here. Um, plus it's, it's something fun to do in the off season, you know, especially for a lot of pro guys that are at home trying to find ways to, you know, a lot of people don't like to work out all the time. <laughs> it's better to go play some tournaments with some cash on the line. And uh, yep. That's Wait. pretty much how I went down. When you were getting ready for your first game, when you were hearing from your agent, did you think it was legit that you could win, you know, your share of $500,000 just for winning six games? Yeah, I thought I figured so just because the the pros, that the, there were pros playing in it. And so I was like, okay, there should be enough money in this tournament. Um, you know, when, you know, especially with a guy like the team work, you're already thinking these guys have already made that much money, you know? And so, um, that was, uh, yeah, I, I was like, well, this could be legit. Uh, you know, just wanted to win it to make sure it was legit. <laughs> um, so you you then played for a few years. So mm -hmm. we obviously can see a big, big difference in TBT year one when you played. And, you know, now this is going to be the 10th tournament. But what did year two, three, four look like for you in TBT? And TBT changes as a whole. Well, you know, for me, I – after year one, I then took over general manager role, wanting to put a team together. And the the problem was trying to convince people that it was real. Um, and then also the first the, the the critical part is the first weekend when you have to pay your own way to win those two games is the most important part. But even then, you know, we did that and we still had guys that wouldn't take the free flight <laughs> and, and like the free hotel, you know, to go play the second rounds and stuff. And I that part I didn't understand. Um, but the first year I had a mix with kind of some of my homies from Dallas and kind of get some pros and I broke my thumb, another guy broke his nose, didn't go well. And then, then the next couple of years we started to get some good teams in there and, uh, you could see the level of competition grew. Uh, there was a lot more colleges getting involved and, uh, obviously the prize money went up, um, pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed the general manager part, getting getting the fan interaction, getting the fans um, into it. I know no Ole Miss, we put a team together, but that didn't go well. <laughs> we, we got upset in the first round, and uh, you know it was that was that one was a little was difficult because I thought that was the, probably the most skilled team that I put together. However, these guys they hadn't seen each other in a long time, and so uh, 
the night before the game, it uh, we probably, you know, we weren't eating pasta and <laughs> resting up for the game. And so we, get, we actually got embarrassed. And, you know, that's kind of what pushed me away and to not do TBT anymore. Um, it was kind of like last, I wasn't, wasn't really playing professionally anymore. And, you know, it's it, you have to put in a lot of work as a general manager to get – set up the logistics on everything, get everyone involved, really pushing them to really do it, and then getting the fans involved to vote you in. And, uh, you know, for guys – and it's not a knock on anybody, but for guys to not take it serious because it's not, you know, your guaranteed contract. And guys aren't trying to get hurt playing non-professionally for their professional contracts. And, you know, it's just – for me, I like to win at all costs. It doesn't matter if I'm in a rec league or a TBT or, you know, the SEC championship. And so I, I I can't stand when people don't take things uh, 100% serious. And so that's what ultimately got me out of TBT is because it's just really hard to get a bunch of pros that can actually win the tournament and everyone be invested in trying to win win the thing. You mentioned you mentioned fan interactions and the legitimacy growing each year and every year. You know you played you played in some wild countries a bunch of different places across the world it had to be nice for you and and your teammates to like play on espn oh definitely you know especially once we got that old miss team together there was a couple guys that um i ha- that i hadn't played with before and uh like well i played with chris warren in the tournament but like Tariko white was another guy that like i didn't play with them at old miss but people don't you know you can you only have four years of guys being together and that's what I think is awesome with the amount of colleges that put together these alumni teams is because now the alumni actually get to see the best players from these schools play together and on a platform that you can watch it from your laptop, from your phone, you know, while you're at work, um, while you're at home. And, you know, that's, that's, cause that's a difference for me. And like the co- in college sports as compared to professional sports is just like how much more passion there is in, in the fan interactions. And I mean, it just means so much more at that level. And so now you're able to bring in these guys who are now playing professionally, bring them back to represent their college. And then now you get all those alumni bases that, I mean, heck, I saw the v- VCU, they packed out the gym. It was like they were playing in the NCAA tournament in TBT, you know? And so that stuff, um, for me, uh, that's that's one of the things about TBT that I, that I really, really love. I have, a, I have a question for you, and it's really going to set up a, a follow-up question, but – um, so that first game you played, which also happened to be the first game ever in TBT, I believe it was an 8 a.m. tip, which obviously is not what TBT looks like anymore. Did you almost miss an alarm? Was there any complications or you were like, I'm going to be there? No, I'm there. I'm, I, I wake up ready. Um, you know, I, I, I will, uh, I'm, I'm too loud for people in the morning, <laughs> especially now that I'm older, like. It's crazy how age changes you. Like, I, I mean, I'd always wake up and have energy in the morning, but like, I wake up really early now for no reason. <laughs> it's like I don't have any room, really where to go um, at six a.m. But for whatever reason, I'm up. But you know, to make a seven a.m. wake in college, it would be hard to actually get out of bed. Uh, but no, nah, I, I always that's something my dad actually instilled in me when I was younger. Is uh, the best team doesn't win the morning game. It's always who's awake. And so uh, that's just one thing that I always try to take advantage of, especially uh, in college. Sometimes you get the 11 a.m. game in basketball, and I always like those because you just wake up and get right to it. Absolutely. Makes makes a ton of sense. Um, so you woke up for the game. You didn't have any risk of missing it. We've heard stories over the years of like a fifth guy showing up, you know, minutes before the game. Do you feel responsible? And does it feel like without Marshall Henderson, there's no TBT? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, 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 I loved it. And I, I, there was, I don't know how many people played in that first one that really continued to be a part of TBT the way I was trying to do it, promoting it and, you know, really getting involved with the general manager stuff. And um, yeah, it, it, it's always nice when you, when you are able to be a part of something when it first begins and then help with the growth of it. And then now, now it's so mainstream that it's just on ESPN, <laughs> you know, on the, uh, people are like, oh, you want some TBT game? I'm like, no, I have, I can't watch TBT because I suffered a really bad loss one year. And it's just like, it was emotional for us. I remember um, one of the guys on my team, BJ Young, we blew a nine point lead 
And uh, it was the Sweet 16. We would have played overseas elite. And because uh, I've been saying they've been, they dodged me like all four years they won. And so, uh, B, I remember BJ, like, I, I, I was shocked to see guys emotional after a loss because it's like, okay, well, we still go play our, go back. We still have our contracts, you know, that we can go play with. And just, BJ was like, man, I don't want to go back overseas. This is supposed to be a great way for me not to go back. And I was like, Oh uh, man, I, I was like, man, I'm crushed too. Uh, but you know that going back to what you were saying about the people, the fifth guy showing up, I believe the first year or the, the, the first year overseas elite won it, which was year two, Travis Bader flew in from a, like a workout in Oklahoma city. And he was their fifth guy in the, and just got there and they were the game before us. And they won the first two games, and then the rest of their team showed up, and then they won it three, four years in a row. So, you know, that fifth guy showing up is crucial because it actually won a team many championships. It's You mentioned a lot of your, your teammates that you played with. Um, you know, you mentioned you got to play with Chris Warren in, in the tournament. Um, do you think guys like yourself and Chris Warren – would have had a better opportunity to make the NBA if you were coming out of college now, because we see in like TBT, all these, like the, the model now in the NBA is like the smaller guards that can shoot mm-hmm. or the, or the bigger guys that could play the five if need be, et cetera. It's like, you're either small or you're medium now in in the NBA. So my question, you guys like you and Chris Warren that were really good in TBT. And now mm-hmm. we see, NBA taking more of that TBT college bowl. Like, do you think you, if your career happened, you know, the last four years, do you think your professional career looks different? No, I don't think I, for me personally, no, because my, my, my stuff was more off the court than on the court. So like that, that's what ultimately did me in, in the end. Um, Chris Warren, probably a better chance I would say, because I, you know, I think there's so much with the, because Chris was before me, and I, technology still wasn't like you weren't really just watching games on your phone all the time. And Chris Warren's one of four players in the SEC with over two thousand points and five hundred assists. Like that's not a stat that he just over. And he's won he won big games. He's he's a champion and uh, like MVP. He's got individual and team accolades over. And uh, you know I probably have a better chance because you see a guy like Carson Ed, um from. Purdue, who was able to get in uh, with the Celtics, and he was, um, you know, a shorter scoring point guard. And, uh, yeah, I think for Chris Wolf, we'd have a better chance now um, because – and the get with the game's changed a little bit more. He, uh, he played for Andy Kennedy, so it was green light always. But other teams are playing a little faster pace, so he might, his numbers might even mean even more economical than what he put up in college. Makes a ton of sense. Do you think – you know, of all the places you've played, you've played TBT, you've played overseas, you've played, you know, college basketball. What what are some of the big differences in all the areas that you've played? And you, you can start with TBT because that's obviously what we're talking about. But what's the style of play like in TBT compared to what? You know, college, et cetera? Well, you know, uh, the funny, the, the interesting part is the rule. There's actually like rule differences kind of in some of in, in the different uh, leagues like you can't you know the, with the elam ending in tbt overseas you can't like they call travels on american dudes all the time trying to push the ball out you know that's that's a travel um you know different things like that are you have to make adjustments and try and plan for uh you know tbt is the, it's the teams i feel like are more now but it was almost like a glorified rec league for a minute which is why i saw the opportunity early before people were catching on that that like what overseas elite did like they hit it perfectly that's what i was trying to do because i saw that there wasn't a lot of competition the high level competition that there is now um but with pros pros obviously know the game better and so you'll get a better brand of basketball on the floor than just like you know former guys playing in a rec league um obviously there's more the the level of competitiveness in the games are going to be higher. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot more school on this side of, of the world than there is uh, on the other side, um, unless you're in China for whatever. 
we're averaging like 70 a game out there. So we we've seen a ton of really special environments now with TBT, which is something new that, you know, you didn't get to really experience as much with the Wichita States getting to host Dayton got to host a, a regional and championship week and their team made it, you know, mm-hmm. to the last four teams. What were some of the crazy college road environments that you played and ultimately thrived in? Maybe some under the under the table that like, hey, you wouldn't think that place is a crazy place to play. Well, I I get this question a lot, and the number one answer will never change. One thousand percent when we played at BYU when they had Jimmer for dead. Um, I actually kind of backslapped the dude and got ejected. It was so crazy. Um, the beginning of the game, I mean, they're putting in over 20,000 people in this place. And you want to talk about passionate fans. You ain't got, like, you go out to Provo, it's a complete different scene. And at the time, I was playing for Utah. So that's obviously one of the biggest rivalries there is. And I come walking out an hour and a half, two hours before the game. I'm always the first person on the floor. And they already had, like, 15,000 students sitting there, and it's just me and my coach. The game starts, and this is the only place that this ever happened to me where I literally – where everything was shaking. I've never I've never had the shakes um, at a basketball game. And uh, the uh, – I mean, I mean, at the beginning of the game, dude dumps it, and I'm just running back, running to the, other, the corner, and everything's going like this. And – we were down – we got down like 20 early because you can't think, you can't hear, you have no idea what's going on. Then you finally settle in. By the time we settle in, we, we cut the lead. I think I hit a three, cut it to four or something. And Jimmer decided to go on a 9-0 run by himself. He, had, he wound up with 39 points that game. It was – and I also tell people that was the one most – besides the Nerlens Noel game when he had 13 blocks against us against that Ole Miss, that was the most dominant player – in one game that I was that I actually played in, it was the Jimmer for that takeover. It was insane, and uh, yeah, and then I wound up getting ejected because I couldn't control myself because I was I was a freshman and that was the first time I'd been somewhere like that. But then, you know, I played a bunch of like played in Florida. Obviously, Florida was really good, and their crowd was good. Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, it's a bunch of old people in Kentucky though. Kentucky's not a the, the space scares you more in Kentucky than the noise, um, but. Yeah, that uh, that BYU experience was one that will be unmatched forever. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, you don't you probably don't want to go schedule like I'm talking coaching. You don't want to maybe schedule a road game at BYU, but for the purpose of going to a really awesome college environment game, especially when Jimmer Fredette was playing, then uh, that was that was the number one spot to go to. Do you think that helped you in future road games throughout your career? Oh, absolutely. Um, that. Because that year in the Mountain West, we put four teams in the in the NCAA tournament. New Mexico was top ten, BYU was top ten, San Diego State was top ten. That was Kawhi Leonard. He beat me out for freshman of the year, and you know, obviously, he's turned into a pretty good player. <laughs> and uh, um, and then UNLV. And so playing in that Mountain West when I was a freshman definitely helped me. Um, but it was more so when I was in high school. Uh, the road environments prepared me for college. Obviously, there's more there. I mean, there's uh, exponentially more um, people in the crowd at college games. But at high school, I was always the guy that everyone wanted to go, you know, cheer at, yell at, whatever. And, you know, I was learning in high school to, to play well on the road and, you know, kind of get into it with fans. So that set me up well for college. <laughs> Do you have do you have a favorite and I use favorite as a loose term, but a favorite technical ejection you know altercation slash fight story that you're like all right this one was a little off the rails but this is my favorite well the funny thing is so everyone obviously knows the Auburn thing when uh when we win the game and I kind of pop the pop the jersey what people don't know is that same incident happened the year before when I was in junior college I hit a buzzer beater uh my my, my junior college team went 36 no we had a big dude named Yannick Marrera who played two years at SMU afterwards 611 guy he got – it was a junior college ejection. Like, he, he rebounded, elbowed a guy. They said he punched him in the face, gets ejected. So, we don't have him. We're playing at New Mexico Junior College, which is a really good basketball school. Um, game goes to overtime. They had their, their baseball fans – or their baseball players were their, their main fans right behind the bench. And uh, 
I wind up hitting a buzzer beater in the corner and uh, to win. And my team, I, I'm on like this, and I'm kind of, there was like 0.6 left, so I'm kind of just sidestepping down. Team comes and mobs me. It just happens to be right in front of the bench and their fans. And, like, if we move the whole scores table, like, it's pushed all the way into the into the bleachers. And we're jersey popping. And we're, there was probably some ju- Juco stuff being said <laughs> and, and actions on that. And so, like, we did – they separated. It almost turned into a brawl kind of. It was like a bunch of little, you know, chess, you know, you know basketball brawl. And uh, we get into the – the hallway, they finally get us in there, and there's just, like, these stacks of chairs. And for whatever reason, we felt like mosh pitting, like we were in WWE, and just start throwing chairs off the walls. And, like, uh, we get – we finally calm down. The coach gets calm. We get on the bus, and we're driving out of town, and there's, like, a parade of cars just sitting there waiting. They just launched apples, oranges, bananas, like, all kinds of fruit. Just pegged our bus with it. And uh, I got it was funny. And then a couple cars started following us, and I had some. I had three teammates from Baltimore, and so they they know a little more than I do. And uh, they're like, "Yo, we gotta get down." You know, I'm like, "This is New Mexico, it ain't Baltimore." And they're like, "No, nah, you can't." And so, uh, you know, there's some of these things that happened like at Ole Miss. They had happened previously, and so you know, everything was just setting the stage. <laughs> I love it. That's a, that's a great story. Do you have any, and I, I should probably know this, but you of course would have lived it. Any TBT altercations of memory to you? Oh yeah. Oh, we had, we had a really good one. So uh, the third year we played, let's see, we were playing in Charlotte. I think we were in Charlotte and, uh, we had we had our six guys ready for round one and two. <laughs> so everyone seems to only have five or six, and uh, you know. And this is another thing about TBT: you get to see some really really good international pros, the Americans that are playing internationally. And that that the first game we were playing a bunch of Texas Tech dudes, and John Robertson was our point guard, and we had Chris Horn. Well, they both were the two first team All Euro Cup. Like, I mean, for people who don't know, the Euro Cup, it's the Euro League is the best teams from every country in the Euro Cup, second best and or third best. And uh, Chris Warren and John Robertson that year were the two guards that were first team all Euro Cup. It's like you're not you're not going to and they, we won by one point. And so it's like you didn't you're not going to find watch two better players in the world get to square off in a random game, you know, like but that's actually meaningful. And so, unless you're, you know, you're streaming it from wherever country they were in. And so, uh, we win that game. And the funny thing is that we had a couple of big dudes on our team. And, you know, one of the guys, Calvin Godfrey, he was our muscle. And we win. And we're all like, okay, we got to play Yancey Gates next. And so, a lot of people can remember Yancey Gates throwing those haymakers when he was at Cincinnati. And Calvin was like, uh, Kelvin's like, man, I don't know. This dude's on another level. And I'm like, okay, if you're worried, now I'm worried. <laughs> like, you're the guy that's supposed to be worried about this. So we wound up actually beating them. We we beat them pretty good. And uh, Yancey goes to Yancey, and, and it's like, he's like cussing out the refs, his coach. We're sitting there like, we, we're like, this is going down as he's getting ejected, like, uh, like thrown out of the arena, basically. <laughs> We're like trying to steer clear. We don't want to, we don't, we're not, we're all like this because we don't want him to see us laughing because we don't want him to be lying over to us. But uh, yeah, that was, I always like it when guys wind up in actual character. <laughs> you know, everyone comes to see, you're like, you've heard the stories and you're like, maybe he'll actually do it. And he does it. You're like, you witness it firsthand. And, uh, you know, that one, that, it was fun for me to actually watch somebody else, um, you know, just kind of just, have a have a moment, you know. Normally it's me having a moment, so that was good. That was a good one right there. <laughs> well, my my final question I have for you, I'm going to take you back a few years, okay? I'm a I'm a stretch four, okay? Really athletic, really really strong, can really shoot the ball. You know, I'm playing overseas. You you're you're familiar with my game, but I'm not familiar with TBT because it's only 2015. Mm-hmm. Recruit me to your team. Well, the first part is starting out by saying there's $2 million 
<laughs> or one dollar, whatever it was, and you get to, um, you know, you divide, you get to choose who makes the salaries. And you know, for instance, when I was recruiting Chris Warren, then we had him. It was the two million dollars. He was making eight hundred, but he was going to make eight hundred thousand. And you know, for me, that was because. And then you know, I had a couple other guys that played with me, and they're like. Who are we playing with? Luckily, a lot of guys kind of know each other from here to there. And so that's how you can kind of rally up. Like, hey, here's the other guys on the team. And uh, this is what we need from you. And when I put that team together, that was our best team. You know, I told everyone, I said, look, when the ball, when it's the end of the game and all of us make game winning shots, but there's only one of us that's going to do it, it's going to be Chris Warren. The ball's going to be his hand. He's made, he, and we're going to pay him the most money. And you know what? Everyone agreed with it. <laughs> like, and that, that's a hard that sometimes that's a hard decision to like come to. Um, but you know, my friend BJ was like, Wow, you, you know, BJ Young's like, Oh, so you would defer to him? I'm like, Yes, I would. <laughs> He's the best player. And so, yeah, when it came to recruitment, you know, hey, hey, this is what this is the team I'm looking at. Always I always send the guys that I that I want on the team. This is where your role is. This is, you know, we'll divide up the money evenly, but like if you win, you're not gonna be upset. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> It's just about getting to weekend number one and having your team there and getting past that. Um, Cause then, you know, we lost when we lost in, in the weekend number two, you, you add players and it's, you know, it's already hard enough to try and get guys that play together to have some sort of chemistry, but then you add play, you know, you get, you win a couple and you know, it's like, Oh, we all know each other. Like the backside of our hands now and then add a couple and then it kind of doesn't mesh well. Um, you know, so that's, that, you know, that's another hard part about TVT trying to get a team of chemistry, because really, that's probably the most important part. You need the talent, but you need the chemistry. Um, so yeah, that's just how, I, that's how my recruitment went down. All right. Makes a ton of sense. Well, Marshall Henderson, I appreciate this. I don't know what your summer plans look like, but you definitely got to get out some, to some TVT games this year. It's going to be a great 10th tournament Wow. You got to get, get out there. You got to maybe, maybe find a coaching staff. Well, y'all need to come to Texas. I've been trying to get TVT to come to Dallas for the last, for 10 years. Can't. Everyone, everyone wants to go out east. I'm like, yo, we got Texas got ballers. You, you will wind up with a team full of dudes from Texas that you don't even know. You're like, oh, who are these guys? You know, kind of like this team from Chicago that we lost to in year one. Just some, some old guys that just come out and bust you. <laughs> that been playing, but just, you know, because some of these, you know, that, like that team, they've probably been playing, and I would assume, play together in leagues all around Chicago, you know, and you get some chemistry from that because that's where I'm, my life is right now. I'm in Dallas on, on the rec league teams, and, you know, I just moved back to Dallas about a month ago, so now I'm getting uh, my guys back. And, and it's weird because we're old now. This I was playing against a dude, and he was like, I'm like, what league y'all? And he's like, oh, we in this 30 and up league. I'm like, 30 and up league? I forgot that I'm 32. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> I think I think TBT could sell out Jerry World for championship week. Definitely. I don't think – I think Mark Cuban would be down to have it in the AAC. He's always, he's always up for uh, innovative ideas. Send, him, send me his number, and I'll, I'll get on that right away. First year. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. This is great. Clocking out early, that's the dish I don't like. Been getting paid since I was riding on the bike. Hit the pedal with the eighth, hopping on the ninth flight. I've been chilling out of sight. I'll be at the bar tonight. Told the bartender, go and take my car to swipe. You try the same thing, but your car get declined. White rappers nowadays, no one not too hard to find. I'm so dapper with my ways, I'm gonna linger in your mind. Always told me good things, look, I'm too dumb to our patient. But Riding bars in my basement I'm anxious in the real world It's time for me to say this The basics, the talent in my mind I can't waste it My life is too safe It's my time for it's taking I'm baking my mind Every day is the same ish Lazy, my grind needs to get a new facelift Coming from the underground And busting through the pavement Rock with it And lean with it My team win it My team win it Now rock with it And lean with it My team turn up when I spit it, I rock with it, and lean with it, my team with it, my team with it, and I rock with it, and lean with it, my team turned up, when I spit it. Don't think that I'm playing because I'm saving the game, and I said that I will be more because oh yeah, that it's so raving, racing and pacing around all these lames in my lane, now my 
my way unless you're trying to pay me not from the playpen it's coming from the jungle when you hear the bell you better be ready to rumble because i'ma grab the gloves and i'm gonna flex my muscles go ahead and spit some bars but you're probably just gonna mumble a lot of rappers these days really need to get them humble because they think they at the top they better stop before they stumble because i'm swiping all their bitties while they swiping right on bumble and your girl he calls me daddy but she only calls you uncle but no we not related homie no we not some 